Today is Sunday, June 18th, 2023. A little bit of a late start to the day. 11.20 a.m. Father's Day. So let's say hi to my daughter, right? Coco. <laughs> she was so excited to get a walk in a video last night that I did. Come on, Coco, be free. Or grab your tire and want me to play with it. <laughs> See, she always wants me to throw the tire, but she never wants to let go of it. <laughs> there we go. You ready, Coco? It's about 74 degrees and cloudy today. Yeah. And the sun's, it's just as I say that the sun's peeking out a little bit. But it doesn't look like any rain is forecasted for today. But I'm trying to film my second, like, vlog style thing. I did one of those when I was traveling from Cleveland to Layton a little over a week ago. So I figured, like, hey, let's try to do a little bit shorter vlog version today. Uh, the only thing really planned is a little bit we're going to head out for lunch to go to downtown Salt Lake City area for a place called Monsieur Krebs. It's our favorite place to eat and I usually get uh, Montmartre which is like a chicken crepe so we'll see when we get there I'll show it off a little bit. You can see Coco just relaxing next to me in the hammock. So back to the weather related things oftentimes when I'm planning where I'm going to be traveling for videos. Like for example, this coming week I'm going to do some videos in the Salt Lake City area, maybe Ogden, maybe go down to Provo since I've never been there. Uh, but I have to look at the weather forecast and keep that in mind. So there hadn't been rain shown, but now when I scroll down you can see Monday 53% it's showing thunderstorms and then Tuesday is also showing that. So my first instinct is like, oh man, like is that going to ruin two days worth of travel? So, uh, you know, I go to my app and I'm looking at the hour by hour for Monday and you can see Monday morning 7 a.m. to about got to get past the advertisement to about 3 p.m. we're pretty much in the clear so the storms are projected for evening time so that's a good thing just lets me know I need to get up early and then I think those storms well I can't it doesn't continue beyond Tuesday at 11 but perhaps they would end around that time so Tuesday may be tough to travel and it's gonna be colder anyway 50 degrees for near summertime yeah Tuesday may be a wash but Monday still looks pretty good yeah when I do these vlogs besides the actual travel component I also like to discuss what goes into the planning when I'm doing these type of travels so hopefully that comes off as entertaining when I did that first vlog the feedback on it was really good but I know a lot of that was my Cleveland-based audience. Hopefully, uh, people will check out this, too. That was part of my thinking, too. Like, I know if I have a Cleveland audience, that's predominantly a lot of my followers. I know it's not as enticing to watch, like, a one-hour or two-hour tour video of something in Utah. But perhaps a shorter like 20 30 minute vlog style video discussing my travel where you're hearing like my narration and my strategy and seeing just bits and pieces of other things mixed in maybe that would be still be entertaining to like my core audience so we'll see always appreciate the feedback let me know an update on coco she is knocked out and not really knocked out she's just relaxing <laughs> Such big paws you have, Coco. Yes, I'm talking about you. <laughs> it's like, what does that think? <laughs> I still like being a big kid, right? <laughs> Who doesn't love uh, embracing their inner child? Coco's like, can I come in? No, you can't come up here, Coco. Alright, enough playing around. I'm going to get back inside and uh, finish getting my shoes on and stuff. I'm 
just a light snack before heading out to the actual crepe place since it'll be close to noon and I didn't eat anything for breakfast you know the place will be like a breakfast lunch combination but this will at least tide me over this and a big glass of milk can never get enough milk doing a bike riding tour last year and I swear like the guy had a machete and was like staring right at me and I rode right past him as fast as I could so yeah just you have to be alert when you're in certain sections of Salt Lake there's other areas where that's really not an issue whatsoever but kind of the streets were driving past not so much now but a little bit earlier you have to be uh, cognizant of that or over there is Liberty Park if anyone remembers the movie The Sandlot, the opening scene actually took place in that park. The house right there that we just passed is where the Frankenstein, the huge Frankenstein Halloween thing you saw on my channel, that's where that was located. And then so your crops right next to it. They just recently started selling the pina coladas here too. Look how cute it looks, a little umbrella. <laughs> These were the two that originally opened this place back in, I guess, 2018. And eventually now their parents are actually the ones that operate it. So every time we come here, they, they greet us. I always like the cute little bike rack. When I bike rode a few times for my videos, I parked it there. But yeah, finished eating. Uh, I think I mistakenly, you know, just in uh, narrating, was trying to say it was their parents. It was, of course, it was just one of their persons parents from that picture who now run the place on a day-to-day -day basis. In Target now, always love my red, white, and blue cookies. I'm obsessed with both of these kinds of cookies. They're my big time snacks around this time of year. A little chilly in here. It actually started raining a little bit outside. I know earlier I was talking about no rain. But this is a super target we're in, so full-scale grocery store, CVS pharmacy, and back there in the other area would be the normal like target department store stuff. I am looking to see if they have some croissants. Probably they do. By the bakery area. Surprised how backed up the cart return was over here. It's sticking all the way out into the aisle. Jeez, this car's about to back into it. So that was a nice little trip to go get the crepes. A little shopping at Target. And then, yeah, I don't know. The rest of Sunday might just be a bit of a relaxation day. So it's Monday.
combine with the previous day's vlog because I really didn't get a lot of good content with that vlog, I think. So, off the train at the North Temple Station in downtown New York City, I got the bicycle. Uh, today is Juneteenth, so it's actually, well, today's the day that Juneteenth is being celebrated as like a holiday for business, uh, like government or federal businesses being off, but I think a lot of normal stores will still be open. Like hopefully I don't go everywhere and all these uh, restaurants or attractions are closed, but we'll see. So when I was passing by the gateway, it's actually the opposite end of this. Like if you were to go toward the lower level, they had the street blocked off but there was a sign that said event today open to the public so I asked the person I said oh what type of event is going on today and they said at noon which it's about 10 30 right now and they said at noon there's going to be a Juneteenth event where black owned local businesses or just black owned businesses are having like little tables set up at the gateway so I don't know we'll see if I have time to check that out later I always find it cool or interesting when you see certain streets that have the rail cars needing all these wires. When I was in Seattle, it was really crazy the amount of wires they had. Every time I come by the Utah Jazz Arena, something's changed, whether it be the color of the big logo outside or now the arena name. It's no longer the Vivint Smart Home Arena or Vivint Arena. It's the Delta Center, which actually... It was originally the Delta Center like a decade or so ago and Delta just got the rights back to it. This is the logo I'm talking about where this logo, I've seen it when it was like green, yellow, and blue, then it became purple and black. But yeah, always something new. And the summer, summer games for the NBA look to be starting in the early July have the fun looking birds outside of Nordstrom. You know what? I, there's a sign here I've never known was here. Let's see what it says. Temple Square Hotel. Oh, so I guess this area used to be Temple Square Hotel. Open to much fanfare in 1930. It was demolished in 2006 to make way for the promontory on South Temple. I don't know. I'm guessing that's one of these buildings here. I didn't expect it to be so windy today. Hopefully that doesn't affect the audio too much on my videos. But across the way you still have all that construction going on at Temple Square. It's truly been years and years. I think by the end of 2025 or sometime in 2025 it's supposed to be completed. Oh no, someone left their phone case or maybe just damaged. <laughs> uh, I don't know if the businesses are open at City Creek today. It's still relatively early. I'm considering doing a live stream around noon because I want to try to capture more people out at the lunchtime hour. Places must be open. I see someone inside of Louis Vuitton. I don't know if they're open yet, but maybe today. And then the fountain. So good thing City Creek Center is open. I'm gonna guess the light crowds are because uh, it's still, they probably just opened, it's only 10.28. If I had to guess they probably opened at 10. I always love seeing the creek flowing in between the middle here. It's a natural creek too. Yeah, I'll have to debate later whether I do a live stream because Ideally, this is not how I want to show City Creek Center on a live stream when it's like pretty much empty. But like I said, it's still early, so 
we'll give it to the lunchtime hour and see how it goes. Something I never noticed here, they have like footprints as if it's from a bear coming out. Can you see the footprints? And there's even a sign there that says black bear. Where do the footprints lead to? They just lead over here. <laughs> I'm getting ready to do my first video. I still have to ride a little bit to get there, but it's in the Avenues neighborhood, kind of up by the state capitol, and it's like near downtown, but it doesn't look like you're in downtown when you are right here. It just looks like a residential neighborhood. There's supposed to be some mansions. I'm gonna take that uh, bike, ra bike lane in the road to get up a couple of streets, and then I have two more hilly streets to go that direction to get to 5th Street and then I'm going to start my main video there. I wasn't kidding when I talked about those steep inclines. See how high that's, that house is just from the street level. Now it's 6th Avenue. A little further than I thought. See how the streets going into the avenues end up sloping down. If I'm not mistaken, I think this pocket park is located right over here. We should be facing the Utah State Capitol building. I'll keep the camera on for the, the reveal here. So going all the way to the edge here, you actually lose the view of the Capitol building, but I'll probably, when I start my main video, go a little bit to the right. I think that's where the area blocked by the trees is. This is where you get the premier shot. So this is right where I'm going to start my video. So I just finished doing a video in the Avenues neighborhood. It wasn't as mansion-y as I would like, so to say. But then at the end, I was like, okay, near South Temple Street, let me try Mrs. Backer's Pastry Shop. And I was like, no, they're closed on Mondays. I came by here once. I think when I did a, I think when I did a video showing the bike, bike lane from the University of Utah campus. And then I stopped the video at a, after I was done near the, uh, Olympic cauldron and then I just rode back without doing a video back to downtown Salt Lake City to get to the front runner station but when I did that I took this South Temple Road and it was convenient to quickly get there and that's when I remember passing that Mrs. Becker's shop and then I you know would look at it occasionally on Google for potentially going there in the future so that's what I was like oh yeah maybe I'll include that in the video now but nope so I haven't eaten all day, even breakfast. And I know usually I like to support local businesses, but I don't care at this point. I think I'm just gonna order a Domino's pizza right there. So here I am outside Domino's. Did I get it? No, I didn't. <laughs> so I was thinking once I got here and I was like, ah, you know what? Cause I was gonna do a second video today, a couple of streets uh, down, like a 10 minute bike ride from here. And I remember there was a pizza shop near there called Pizza No-No. So I'm like, you know what, that's more of a local place. I wanted to try it. You know, I can bear another like half hour of delaying my meal for the day. As much as I love Domino's, you know, I loved experiencing something local and new. So this is where I'm going to start my next video. I rode down to that cool looking neighborhood. So I'm going to start the next video all the way up there. There's like a centerfold circular artwork or a, an art piece of artwork in the middle of a circle roundabout in the road. But otherwise I'm going to go to No No Pizza, which is located right over here. 
So I am lucky number 99. You can see the outdoor seating area at No No. So I'm waiting for my order. Consider doing a live stream, but when I tested the connection, oh, I gotta move the camera now. When I tested the connection, it was very weak here. So nope, if I do that, it'll have to be in downtown Salt Lake City. So yeah, I will just wait for my pizza. I ordered a margarita with pepperoni. Pretty pricey, you know, but it is what it is. It's a specialty place. <laughs> One bad thing is that it's because of the windiness. Even though the scenery and ambiance is cool, being underneath the trees and stuff, you know, little leaves are blowing, so I'm sure a little leaf could blow into my little water or the pizza when it comes out. There it is, ready to dive in. Again, this is the margarita with pepperoni pizza. It's a little bit hot, so I'm waiting for it to cool down. So it tastes good. I'm enjoying it. The problem is the cheese. Well, that one, that one made a liar on me. It was say the cheese. You can see by the other slices, just has been dripping off the whole time. Of course, these last ones aren't. Now actually exploring the ninth and ninth neighborhood. I always like to find a sign that represents it if I can. So it was good to see this one right here. So I'm going to be recording my video. I actually started it already a uh, block or two that way, making a full circle until I reach the artwork at the top of the hill. Yes, make sure you do not climb the chicken outside of Crack Shaft. Here's the whale at the top of the 9th and 9th area. It's supposed to be called Out of the Blue representing the resiliency and like natural togetherness of this community and occasionally you're supposed to have artists be painting different murals on it so i guess you may see the colors of this change over time always enjoy seeing cool murals colorful one with the salt lake signage and the flowers this is on the side of the hip and humble building So I was debating whether to head to Salt Lake, the downtown portion, and do a live stream, but I'm looking at the time, it's already 2.13 Mountain Time, and the next Front Runner train comes in about 46 minutes, so I feel like I have enough time to relax, not do too strenuous of a bike ride to get there, and I'm pretty pleased that I got two videos today. Just getting ready to leave the 9th and 9th area. Passing by Trolley Square now, the Trolley Square Water Tower. It's actually an indoor mall there, and there's some other places like the Hive Market, that's a bigger place, and over there is Whole Foods Market. But in 2007, there was a tragedy here where a gunman, it was considered a mass shooting because he, I think, killed five people. It may have wounded others. So, yeah, I know. I very first time I visited when I was looking up history, I saw that. But don't let that deter the uh, niceness of the area. Riding in the bike lane on 500 South. As you're riding, though, there's you know quite a few like homeless camps that you can see that are parked on the the street side level and that's the library there you can see a couple of camps set up there so yeah there is a still a significant homeless problem in the downtown Salt Lake area like behind me there you can see it or if you look over that direction you can see it as well that's like a little nice park that I visited when I was doing some type of video last year and I showcased most of the stuff so it seems to be at least in the summertime man that wind is blowing <laughs> I, th I was about to say my hat hasn't come off once. I thought it was uh, close that time. But yeah, you can see. I know there's been a presence of it on 500 South at times, but it's just, it looks a lot more right now. Maybe again, maybe that's because it's summertime. And it's easier to stay on the streets. They have the road closed here where uh, 200 East is. And this is the, li 
library over there and Washington Square here where it's like the county building I think so either some event happened or will be happening but again it's not everywhere on 500 South there's just pockets of it like right here you don't see the area lined with it more so like if you went probably five blocks downward near Pioneer Square that's where it gets really bad although you do see you know a couple people you know just laying in the grass here which is you know a shame to see you hate to see all these people on down times I can tell by the way my arms are looking in some spots that I'm gonna get a sunburn I tried to apply a little bit of sunscreen but I kind of rushed it so I'm headed toward the main downtown area now just going toward the front runner train station still got about 30 minutes I probably have like four different videos on my channel where I've given a shout out to pie hole that's a pizza slice joint yeah there's been probably I've probably been in there at least five or six times in the past to grab a couple of slices of course I just had a whole entire uh, margarita pizza earlier so I am pretty full right now more so thirsty I thought about stopping somewhere to grab a big drink of a big bottle of water ice cold water but I don't know probably just survive with my water bottle there's a couple of streets in the downtown Salt Lake area that has dedicated bike lanes and then that's where you turn to head north still in the downtown area I took this trail because behind me a couple of blocks behind me would be the Sheridan Hotel so my very first time in Salt Lake which was in 2018, March 2018. I stayed at the Sheridan for a conference in Salt Lake. And rather than walking from the conference to the, or hotel to the conference and vice versa, I rented those green bikes that I mentioned earlier. And this is the same route that I would have, that I was taking when I was doing that for like the three or four days I was doing the conference. The conference itself, the conference center itself is just to the right. So once I got here, I would have been making a right turn. That Hyatt Regency big glass building was not there before. That's basically where the conference center is, but they built that hotel and just finished it in the years since I went to the conference. But yeah, this whole building here and going that way which you can't see right now is the actual conference center and if you've seen my Salt Lake videos I have featured that a couple of times like showing the front of the outside of the conference center along whatever I guess 300 West would be the next street I was just about to say I am scorching and then what do we have here sprinklers although they're facing the other direction so I don't think I'm gonna all right, I am feeling a little bit, more so on my legs. All right, there you go. I had a, of all the times I wanted the wind to blow, I wanted it to blow there. Those hard winds that you've seen throughout the video. At least I got a little bit on my legs. So we're kind of coming full circle from where we started this morning, because now you can see part of the Delta Center, because earlier I was bringing up how it used to be the Vivint Arena. Sidewalk's blocked here, so I'm going to have to get down and cross the street. They've nicknamed this intersection Carl Malone Drive and John Stockton... John Stockton Boulevard, I think. And I believe that's the statues of both of them right there. And we have a little bit of time, so maybe I'll stop by the gateway to see if that Juneteenth event with the vendors is still going on. And just like walk through. Uh, I was supposed, they said it was supposed to start at noon. It's 2.44 right now. I think typically those type of things last at least three hours. So I guess that could be the tail end of it if, if, it, if that's the case. But we'll see. Another colorful area of the gateway. Let's see if they 
are still doing that event. I actually may not want to record here too much because they play uh, music. Now I want to get a copyright. Yeah, they've got some vendors still doing businesses. A couple of food trucks. I think doing the two-day vlog afforded me a lot more content, so I think I'll be more pleased with it as far as critiquing myself goes. So I am at the front runner station with five minutes to spare. If you enjoyed this vlog, two-day version, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and we will see you next time.